Welcome back gang. The first thing I want to do today is finish up this authentication um, nav bar that we have up here. Okay, so one thing I want to do is switch this. I In the code, I accidentally typed in the wrong, uh, let's see, in the wrong spacing for the nav bar. So you see up here it says, um, <laughs> specs but it's not it's supposed to be space uh the other thing i wanted to do is add this uh class to the logout route okay so let's go ahead and take a look at that and make sure that that took well that's still refreshing okay and that gave us a bit more space in between Okay, let's head back into the code. Let me close this and this. And the next thing I want to do is uh, for this first span in the template, um, we can go ahead. Well, the, in the template, we can add the if this auth, and this should be auth logged in. And then it'll be welcome. We'll have a new link, users, and in here we're gonna add this auth user username. Okay, and then um, that should be good for now. In down in this template down here, we're gonna have uh, the v else in the in the template for the register and login routes. So v else. Okay, now this auth, um, this auth logged in, I'm going to show you where that's coming in from. If we head back to the browser and we open up our inspection tools. Okay, see now we don't have a logged in user, so we only have the register and login routes here, which is perfectly fine. Um, so we'll come in and we'll open up our view. And now that we have Vuex, running we see that in here we don't have a user or anything but in the database we have a test user that we made in the previous video so let's go ahead and log in with that user test at test.com and password is password okay so now we're logged in and now you can see that we only have the routes that are available for the authenticated user and we also have the username which I think I'll make that caps but if we refresh the view the view x over here you see now that we have the state the auth logged in is true and that's where we're getting that property from up here and here okay so why don't I go ahead and add that class to the username so it's just uh, capitalize okay we'll go back and refresh and now that should have a capitalize over here okay cool the last thing we needed to take care of with our, our authentication is the logout um, the logout function which we didn't get to do in the previous video so if we go back to the code editor the text editor and we go to the logout route Okay, all we need to do is now add a uh, an event. So at submit dot or well, we'll just call it logout, and then it's dot prevent. Okay, and then we'll come down to the script tags, and in here we'll just add the method. The methods logout. And it's really simple, this auth logout. And if you remember, this is coming from Nuxt, the config that we set up with the strategies. So we already have that route set up. Okay, so this is good. Now let's go ahead and see if that works. We'll go to our network. This way we can see the uh, the progress it's making. So refresh. 
and then we'll click log out and we're not quite getting an error but also nothing is happening so let's check the co uh, text editor and okay so this is supposed to be at click okay let that compile go back to the browser okay we'll try to click it again okay so now we have log out and we also have a redirect back to the landing page that we set up in the previous video with the redirected um, if authenticated and the authenticate routes uh, the middleware okay so now um, what I want to do is we're gonna go ahead and log in and we're gonna log in as test at test.com password okay uh, the first thing I want to do is start setting up our list of users okay so let's head back to the text editor and then uh, we can close this and we can leave this open for now we don't have a route for it so now we can go ahead and start bringing in some users so we're going to open up a new terminal because we're going to need a new controller so if we go up to the API folder and app HTTP controllers we don't have any controllers yet but I want to make a new folder as well so we're gonna um, type in PHP artisan make controller the um, folder is going to be called API slash slash and then we'll call this user controller and we'll also make it an API resource controller um, one thing I also want to do is I want to attach the model of uh, user to this controller. Okay, so it should here's a folder it created for us, and the user was imported. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so now let's also create a route for it. So if we go down to routes. API what we can do is we can leave this as it is and then um, if you wanted to you could also make a make a, um, a controller or add this to the controller but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is so we're gonna come down here and we're gonna create a route middleware and the middleware that we're gonna be using is auth sanctum and then it's going to be a group because we're going to put all our routes in here function okay curly braces and let's not forget our semicolon so the first route we're going to have in here is a route get slash users and then open up some brackets and we're going to bring in that user controller class and we're going to be using the index function okay now let's make sure that this was imported up top which it is okay cool so now we can open up our user controller and in the index method we're going to make a call to the back end for to grab all of our users so we're gonna return response and then in brackets we're gonna add users and then it's gonna be equal uh, user where ID does not equal not equal request user ID and then we're just gonna say get it's nothing fancy it's just a very simple call um, to grab all the users except for the authenticated user now we can go ahead and create a page for this so we're gonna go pages 
and then we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it users oh actually well i can keep it like that and then the file will just be index.view now another cool thing about nuxt is it's very very intuitive so when you create a route let's say our route is going to be in here our route is going to be slash users what nuxt will want to do is if you have a folder it'll look for the users index and that will be that user route it'll be that first um the the root of that route which is just users okay let me show you what i mean by that let's go ahead and put in uh some html and we'll just say div users okay and then we're going to create a javascript section okay and in here we're going to make the call so we need to add a data field equals uh, parentheses curly braces we'll open that up and all we're doing is we're bringing users and we're putting them in a uh, in empty array okay the next thing we're going to do is create a method okay open that up and we'll just call it get users and then in that function that method will say this axios get always remove the dollar sign and then we'll make a call to that api route so api users and then the standard then response equals and for now, I'm just going to console log the response. Console log the response, and then we'll also add a catch just in case. Catch error equals log or console log error. Okay, now before we, we don't have to click anything to do this. All we need to do is just like in regular Vue.js, we can create a mounted lifecycle hook. Okay, we'll open that up. And then, uh, actually, I don't need all of that. Just leave it like that, comma. And then we can just call this method. method. So this get users. And let me go back to the other terminals just to make sure we're not getting any errors. Okay, so let's go back to the browser. It's refreshing. And while it does that, let's go to the nav bar and add that route so we can click right to it. So nav and users, which is right here. So this is now going to be slash users. Now let's go back to the browser. Okay, so it's already refreshed. If we hover, we can see now on the lower left down here that we have that link, that route, users. So let's click it. And now we're on the dashboard page. You can see users, and that's what we put in the index page. So it's kind of a nifty little trick that it does with these uh, folders. Oh, one more thing that I want to look at is we also have, uh, if we go down to this console log. Okay, we did a console log to grab those users. So let's see if that comes up. So refresh. And now you can see we have a users array here. Okay, and if we open that up, it's an empty array. So let's see why. Let's come back to the controller and make sure that we... Oh, there's only one user. Okay. So let's go ahead and take care of that. If we go down to the database factories, we'll go ahead and just see the database with some, um, some users. 
Okay, so we'll come down here. We need to add the username key. Uh, so copy paste. Username. Username. And then we'll go to the Cedar folder. Database Cedar. And then we'll just make 10. Nothing too crazy. Go ahead and move that up. And let's just go ahead and see the database. So PHP, Artisan, Migrate, um, no, DB, Seed. And when we do these, you also want to make sure that you're in the API folder, okay? Because it's going to the API route, the Laravel stuff. Okay, so it's completed successfully. Now let's try to refresh and see what we get. So refresh. Okay, so now we have our users again, and now you can see we have 10 in the array. 10 users, 10 users now in the database. Okay, so let's go back. Um, we can close the cedar. Factory, let me just move this up before I close it. Um, and where's the index page? Index. Well, let me close this and we'll head back to the other terminals. Now the users we're getting in, the users we're getting in, we can now go ahead and just give them, you know, push them to the users right here. So we'll say this users equals response users. Okay, and that will give this key some value. So now we can come up here and start building this out. This is gonna be very simple. So we'll open this up and then we'll add, um, we'll add some classes to this. So container, MX auto and margin top of 16. And here we'll have a div with the flex space X uh, 6 MX auto and width half. Half. I don't know why that's doing that. But let's go ahead and fix that here. So slash two, uh, this is a div and this we don't need. Okay, so now we need an H2 with a class of flex shrink zero text three XL. And we'll open that up. And we'll just say users in here. The next div will have a flex one border left and a margin top of three. And then here we're gonna have another div with a class of uh, flex. Margin bottom of three and a margin left of three. We'll open that up and then we'll just have an image tag in here. Okay. Um, we're going to give this one some classes as well. And it'll be a width of eight, height of eight rounded full object cover okay and underneath that image I'll deal with the image in a second I'll add it in um, but we're gonna create a next link okay add 
at our brackets here. Uh, next link. And for now, we'll just say two equals, we'll just leave it at hashtag. And the class is uh, text, Excel, ML, two. And then for right now, we'll just say, uh, well, we can do, since we're pulling in the, um, well, actually, just we'll just say user. username so let's also add i'm going to paste this in right here and this is just an image that i snagged from unsplash and if you go to the website and you're looking for any images this is the image that i've chosen but uh, unsplash is perfect for development because all the images are free um, and if you put it into production you just have to give them attribution uh, the creators, the I guess photographers of these images, and um, again, this is the one that I chose. I lost it. This one. Is it just? It's just simple. Okay, so let's come back and now you can see we have the image in there. We have the user title and the username which we haven't put in yet. One thing I'd like to mention about Nuxt is that let's say you wanted to use. Let me. Uh, copy paste let's say you wanted to bring in your own images into your app and hold them within your app uh, Nuxt has this assets folder and what you would do is you can just create another folder call it images and then in your source you would call it by doing uh, a tilde assets whatever your folder name is let's say images and then whatever your um, whatever the name is of your image okay so that's how you would do that but I didn't bother to do that I just grabbed it from straight from the unsplash website just because it's demonstration okay cool so now we're seeing everything so what I want to do is in this div class surrounding the image and the link I want to put a v4 so v4 user in users we're going to have a key of user id and then now in here we're going to have curly brackets and it'll be user username okay and that's what we're getting from up here so now let's go back and refresh and see what that looks like okay cool so now we have all of our users except for the authenticated user and now we can get ready to start adding links to these pages. Okay, so let's head back to the text editor and we can go back to the API and create a new route for the user. So copy paste and this one is going to be user slash um, and then we're just going to use root model binding. So user and the function that we're going to be using is show okay one thing I wanted to mention when we did the call to make the API uh, when we threw that flag on that what that did was make this controller now have only five methods so just the methods that are needed for the API it doesn't have the two extra ones which I think it's create or create an index no create and um, edit or something like that yeah, I think it's create and edit, which are the other two, which they don't have. So let's go down to the show method, bring that up. And because we're using root model binding, it's already in here. It's already in here. We don't have to add that. We can just do return response. And then let's add a semicolon at the end. We're going to create an array. And I'll open this one up because we're going to have a few things in here later on. So user equals, and now we can just use user. Okay. Now we need to head back down to the user folder that created we created in Nuxt. And we need to add a new file. But how we're going to do this is, as I said, Nuxt is very, very intuitive when it comes to routing. So if we want to define a route, okay, 
For us, we're going to just be using the ID. But if we were going to be using the slug, we can put the slug and it will automatically pull the slug as this page route. Okay. And because we're using root model binding, it's just going to pick the user. Let's say if we were using the slug, it would just be the user slug. But because we're using the ID, this is going to go ahead and just pull in the ID because our new page is going to have this underscore in front of ID. It's going to automatically read it. Okay, so first let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, div, we'll just say user, because now this is the user page. Okay, and then uh, we need to add some script tags. And then we'll just go ahead and make the uh, call the data section equals um, parentheses curly braces open and I need the semicolon okay and here we just creating a user object an empty object comma we're gonna make the method so to make the Axios request to the API. So methods, open that up. And the method we're gonna call is guess, get user. Okay, open that up. Then it's this Axios uh, get. And then the route is API user slash. And then we also need to add the parameter. So in our case, we're going to be using the root parameter ID. So this root params ID. And all that is is just the page that it's on is the ID number from the page that's going to be injected into this. OK, um, and then we have a then response we need a period here okay equals console log log response and then we'll also do a catch here error and also, if you do decide to put something like this in production, please make sure that you remember to remove the console logs from with, with, throughout your app. I know I'm not doing it here, but normally if it was in production, I would take these out after everything is set and done in that route or in that method, I would go ahead and delete it. So console log error. Okay. So now let's go back. Oh, we need to add a lifecycle hook. So this one we can just use created. I use them interchangeably, whichever one works best. Um, so this one we can just use created and call this get user. Yeah, I just use them interchangeably because I can never remember which one does what. Um, okay, so now what we also need to do is in the nav, the nav no sorry it's the index okay we need to give this nux link a route so this one we're gonna put a semicolon at the beginning and then inside we're gonna add quotation marks Ooh. only one set of quotation marks and then we're gonna add back ticks uh, back ticks and inside the backticks, we're going to have the route, which is users um, user ID, and that should be good. So let's go back and well, it's already refreshing. And now if we hover, you see in the lower left, okay, so we'll hover over one in the lower left, that user slash two 
is coming from our Nuxt users too. This ID is too. Okay, fantastic. Let's go to the ID page and start building out this page here. Okay. The first thing we want to do is we can get rid of this user. And in here, we'll add a class of container MX auto and margin top 16. And again, you can probably put these um, containers into components if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do all that. Um, and then here we're going to have a, a div with a class of flex space x6 mx auto. Open that up. And then we need two divs. Um, yeah, we'll just div times two. Okay. The first one is going to have a class of um, flex, flex call, items end, and a width of one, three. And we'll open this one up. The second div, we can just add those classes right now. So it'll be a class of flex, border, left, margin top of three, and a width of two thirds. And we'll open up the div. Okay, so in that first div, we'll have an H2 with a class of text um, 3 Excel and inside we'll just have the user username because that's what we're pulling in from right here. In the second div we'll have another div with a class of flex margin bottom 3 margin left of three. Open that up and then we can just grab the image because we're going to need that in here so we can use the same image. So copy, paste, um, and in here we'll just underneath the image we'll add a div with a class of flex flex call open that up and then we'll have three span tags um, times three see if I can get this right and the classes of text Excel and margin left two so hopefully yeah cool I forget how to use them at some times um, open that up. Okay, so in the first one, we can keep these all in one line. So the first one will be user name. The second one will be user email. And then the last one will be user username. We're keeping this very, very basic and very, very simple. So let's pull this up a bit. And we already have the link to the page in the app in the um in the users already. So this should be good. So we'll wait for this to finish compiling. Okay. We'll just go to the first one. Okay, I don't see any information, but we are getting it in, which means I must have not assigned it in the function. So we'll come down here. Yeah, and of course I didn't. So this one is going to be this user equals response user. We'll go back to the browser, and then it should change in here now. Cool. So now we have 
access to our users and we got a little information. So the next step I want to do, and I'm going to end it on there today, is I'm going to create the buttons so that we have them in here. Um, well, I'm going to create the first button, which is the add friend button, so that we can we can get that shown. Um, let's see. So we'll head up to the code. And right in the first div up here, since we don't have the friendship system yet, I'm just going to keep this as simple as possible. So we're going to add a template. And uh, we'll just put a VF for now. So VF. Um, we'll say this auth user ID. Make sure I spell that correctly. Auth user ID does not equal this user ID, which we shouldn't be getting anyway since we can't, we don't, we're not going to any of our own pages. We don't have our own profile set up. But um in here we'll put a form and we don't need this action and in here we'll add a button and this button will be of the type uh type submit and then the class will be i'll just go ahead and paste it in Okay, and then here we'll just say add friend, and then under the add friend, I'm just going to go ahead and paste a um, an SVG, which is this the, it's a font awesome SVG, but it's the user plus one, and I went over that in the social network series. Um, so let that compile down, and let's go ahead and take a look head back to the browser okay and now that that's finished you see now we have the add friend button on someone else's page okay so um, another thing I want to do is um, I know we're going to be using this um, well I like to make these buttons into components so we'll go ahead and do that real quick if we go back to the component section we can just copy we'll paste it in here paste and we'll rename it uh, blue button rename blue button view okay now we can close out this original teal button now we can just grab the styling from the ID page cut it out of there go back to the blue button and then we'll just paste it in here Okay, paste. Now we'll go back to the ID and we'll clean this up. We can get rid of this class. And now here, this button, this button, we'll just change to blue button. Okay, now if everything worked correctly, we can go back to the browser and this should be the same. Okay, fantastic it is. And we have a hover state and everything. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is these icons, we're only using two of them in this particular app, but in the social network series, I have a whole uh, video dedicated to the pulling in a lot of these SVGs into its own component. Okay, uh, so that's just a little side note. I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. In the next episode, we are going to be working on the meat and potatoes of this project, which is the friendship system, because that's what it's all about, right? So in the next episode, we are going to take care of that. 
I will push all this code up to GitHub. I'm also going to put the link for Unsplash in the description. So if you guys need to look and or are interested and never heard of it before, or, you know, wanted to try something new, the link will be in the description for that. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead, drop them down below, and I'll try to get to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.